Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's confirm we are all on the same page. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice clearly, kindly type in hi in the comment section so that we can get this session started. I want to make sure we are all on the same page before we get this session started. So I need some response in the comment section. Okay. Thank you, Carrie, for that confirmation. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Okay, Valeric, good morning to you. We have um, 05 Tarek. Good morning. How are you doing today? And they made 2009. Good morning to you as well. Innocent babe, good morning. All right. Um, okay, what else do we have here? So we have um, one six wine as well. Omar Azan, good morning. Thank you very much for that confirmation. So I think we are good to go on this one. Has um, I can get a handful of um response confirming that my screen can be seen and my voice can be heard clearly so i want to welcome you all to yet another promising session on extreme speed life and my name is sharif daramola and in the next one hour i will be taking you on a trading journey where we shall be evaluating the financial market using technical parameters to identify trading opportunities that we that we could actually take advantage of during the New York session today. And before we go into the details, definitely, as usual, we will be um, revisiting and reviewing all the pairs we have been monitoring since Monday. We are going to be looking at how well these pairs are doing and if there are any new developments as regards to if we need to add more position or if we need to opt out of this trade when we need to lock our profits, I will be sharing with you during the course of the live session. So my advice is that try as much as possible to stay tuned in throughout the course of the session so that you don't miss out on any of this information that I will be dishing out during the course of the session. And if you have any peer you want us to look at, be it a commodity, options, cryptocurrency, currency peers, Whatever it is, feel free to drop it in the comment section and let's see how we can incorporate it um, into our schedule for today. So without further ado, let's dive into the chat and let's see what is really going on in the market right now. But before we go into the market, let's quickly look at what is happening on the economic calendars of today. And based on the based on the pairs that we have been monitoring since Monday, I think the only event that is going to be um, affecting us is the um, durable goods order that is uh, for the USD. Then we have the gross domestic product annualized for quarter three. And then we have the non-defense capital goods order um, aircraft for the month of September. Um, These events are coming up in four hours, 30 minutes from now. So we're going to be looking at the structures in the market right now that is likely going to be lining up in favor of any impulsive move that we want to be taking advantage of. So with that being said, let's dive into the charts. Let's see what's going on. And the first pair we are going to be looking at as usual is the US oil. And on the US oil, remember, we took advantage of this bullish impulsive move that um, Um, sorry, we had this impulsive move that we took advantage of um, during the um, trading session on Wednesday. 
and currently on the US oil we are running with about um, let me see how many pips that is uh, from what we have here we are running with about um, over 200 pips in profit at this point in time and I hope we all have moved our stop loss to lock in some profit as we don't know what's really going to be happening in the next couple of hours so as we head into the new york session let's quickly look at what is happening on, on the higher time frame so that we can have an holistic view of what is going on and we also give a leverage for those who are not part of the session during the early days of this week to be able to uh, be part of what our decision making is going to be like for today so the first thing we'll be doing here is to scale up to the daily time frame and on the daily time frame, the first thing we observe here on the daily time frame is that price action has been on a strong bullish momentum in the last two years. And as a result of this, we were able to connect the series of higher lows here to give us that resultant bullish trend line, as you can see on your screen right now. So that being said, the next thing we observed again was... Um, a situation where price action has been caught within a downtrend scenario since the month of June and as a result of that we were also able to connect the series of higher lows here to give us that resultant bearish trend line that has been guided price action in the last four to five months then in addition to this current structure we have here is the very important key level the much the most anticipated level we've been having in the last three weeks now the $86 MAC, and if we look into the past, we can see how this level has been a major determinant of price action. We can see sometime in the month of August, it was a buying zone. And then in the month of September, though, we saw selling pressures from this area, which negated all buying pressures as we saw price break down that $86 level. And throughout the month of September, price continued to trade right below the $86 MAC. So we had the breakout of the $86 level during the early, um, early days of the month of October. Price came back into the current structure here and the last two weeks we saw uh, price consolidating right below that structure. So from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakout of a structure, remember we had the breakout of this um, key level, which also lines up with a bearish trend line we identify here. And from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakout of a structure like this, we expect the price is likely going to come back, do a retest of that structure, uh, whereby price action will evolve into a structure that will be supporting a trend consideration to the upside. And so if you look at what happened here, though we had this consolidation phase around this area, as price continued to reject the $86 level, we saw selling pressure around this area and we said um, we will be looking forward to bullish potential as soon as, as long as price breaks above the $86 mark. And this is exactly what happened during the course of um, the trading session yesterday. We finally saw an engulfing candle taking price right out of the $86 mark to emphasize um, the strength of the buyers at this point. And one thing I would like to state here is that this impulsive move that took price right, right out of the $86 mark is likely going to be the incitation of the second wave of the bullish momentum that started three weeks ago. So we had this bullish momentum that started three weeks ago, which is more or less um, going to be seen as a reflection of um, the OPEX plus decision to cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day, which happened at three weeks ago thereabouts and then we saw a retracement phase and as usual we expect retracement after every impulsive move and um, this is likely going to be the second wave of that bullish momentum and if we are going to be looking at this from um, a technical standpoint looking at it from an holistic view uh, we should be seeing this as an impulse leg and our take profit target should be an extension of this impulsive move and what we are going to be doing to identify that is to use our Fibonacci extension tool, run it through the previous impulse leg that we have here. And if we do that correctly, we should be having somewhere within the 1414 and the 127.2% um, as an area for our take profit target, which falls within the $100 mark, which is also a very strong psychological level at this point. So we should be leveling this, the tip target for our buying momentum this is a long-term perspective anyway 
So let's label this level for the sake of clarity. So we should be having somewhere around there as our take profit target in the meantime. And um, since we already have that impulsive move yesterday, so let's see how we want to take advantage of this trend continuation pattern. So we have two scenarios we want to be looking forward to at this point. Um, there is a possibility that price might likely come back to do a retest of that key level. We know from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakout of a structure, there is a likelihood that price will come back to do a retest of that structure to inside the trend continuation. So the first scenario is a possible setup in such a way that price comes back here and if we start identifying buying pressure from this level, then we want to be taking advantage of a bullish momentum on our lower time frame. So that is one scenario we want to be looking at. And then the other scenario is a situation where we start seeing um, a trend continuation pattern around here. It could be a bullish rectangular pattern where a breakout retest on lower time frame will be confirming a trend continuation to the upside. So these are the two scenarios we want to be looking forward to um, going into the New York session today. So in order to get a better perspective into what is going on right now, what we want to do is to scale down to the lower time frame where we want to see what is really going on around this area. And let's use that structure or pattern we will be able to identify there to make an informed decision. So scaling down to a much lower time frame, let's say the um, let's say the two hours time frame for now. This is what we have here. So let me do some cleaning so that we can have a a clean chart here. So we have um, hold on a second. Let me do some cleaning here. Uh, so we no longer need this. We no longer need this one too as well. So we should be having this at this point in time. And one thing, the first thing I observed this morning when I looked at the chart was this um, trend line. So if we look, go back to as far as last week, we can see how this um, trend line has been respected by price action, giving us a bullish momentum. Though we saw the breakdown here, we saw a retest here. And last yesterday's trading session, saw a situation where price broke right above that trend line so with the current information here we can see how important that trend line is at this point in time so going into the um, two hours time frame and looking at what is happening here in the last um, two hours uh, we can see that following this impulsive move to the upside here we saw a situation where price was caught within a channel between the 88 dollar level and the 87 dollar 40 cent area and we saw this move led into a sharp retest of this bullish trend line around this point. So a sharp rejection of this bullish trend line evol um, evolving into a hammer candle is a sign that we might be having a bullish momentum from this point. So we saw a sharp rejection of that bullish trend line during the early hours of today. So is this going to be a sign that a bullish momentum is coming in at this point? So we want to be very careful here. Uh, we don't want to lose out um, lose out on the profit we have made so far on the spare. And remember, we have moved our stop loss. I think somewhere above the $86 level seems most appropriate to hold our stop loss here to lock in some profit, maybe around the $86.50 level. As we can see, we have a structure around here which has been a selling niche. So um, somewhere below that level should be a good area to put our stop loss to protect our position against any sudden pullback that's likely going to be happening so on the two hours time frame here with the current structure using that trend line that we have identified so we have a two scenarios we have a scenario where price respects this bullish trend line to send price to the upside or we could be having a situation where price breaks down that bullish trend line in such a way that a retest of structure might likely send price back into the 86 dollar level somewhere around there before we start seeing um, patterns on lower time frame that will be supporting a trend continuation to the upside. So let's I, um, let's take into consideration this impulsive move and let's find a golden zone area for this impulsive move. And then let's see if how far this retracement phase that appears to have begun um, during the later part of the New York session yesterday. So we want to see how far this retracement will likely go. So let's bring out our Fibonacci retracement tool and then we run it through the previous impulse leg like here and if we do that we should be aiming at somewhere within the 50 and the 78.6 percent of the previous impulse leg like, which will fall somewhere around here 
Uh, let's label this area as a buy zone. Okay. So this is the first scenario we want to be looking at. Let's see if price is going to come drop to as far as this area where we look out for reversal patterns to join the con trend continuation to the upside. That is one scenario. And if we look at the buy zone here, it lines up exactly with the $86 level, which was broken during the course of last week trading session and also the $85 level, which was broken as well. So that is, that is the first scenario we are looking at. Then the second scenario is um, taking into consideration the channel that we have here. And if we look at this channel here, it's looking more like a bullish rectangular pattern. As you can see, we have this impulsive move to the upside, followed by um, a consolidation phase right within the $88 and the $87.40 mark. And from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a, a bullish rectangular pattern like this, we expect that at one point in time, price is likely going to break out of the resistant level of this channel to give us a bullish signal after which a retest of structure is likely going to be sending price to the upside. So that is one scenario. That's the second scenario we want to be looking at from a technical standpoint. However, if we look at what happened during the early hours of today, that is the retest of this bullish trend line. I'm of the opinion that we might be having a bullish momentum from that point. So instead of waiting or waiting for price to move all the way above the $88 level, missing out on all this uh, move, let's see if we could actually take advantage of a bullish momentum right at the support level of the $87.40. So if we want to take advantage of that, we want to look out for trading opportunities right around that area. What we want to do is to scale down to a lower time frame and let's see what is really going on right around the support level of this channel. And in order to do that, it's better we scale down to a much more lower time frame like the 15 minutes time frame, for instance. And let's see what is going on at that point. And so when I did that this morning, this is what I was able to see here. Let me take this one out of view so that we can have a better view of what I'm talking about here. So this is what I was able to see here on the 15 minutes time frame. We can see that price action has found lower highs since um, the early hours of today. We saw how we had this lower highs giving us a clue that there is a bearish momentum here. We can see we had a breakdown of that structure. Price came back within this level. Then we have this resistant point of that trend line respected one more time pushing price here. But as soon as price tested this bullish trend line here, we saw that we had a higher low, giving us a clue that there is a tendency that we will be having a bullish momentum from this area. So because of this setup we have here, what I want to be looking forward to to join any possible bullish momentum around this area is a situation where I look out for a breakout of this bearish trend line. That is price action takes out all the sell position here along the trend line takes it out then that will be giving me a bullish signal remember we are not getting too excited at a breakout of a structure like this so if a breakout of the structure happened wherever it may go we want to be patient enough to wait for price action to come back and give us a retest of structure which will be giving us a confirmation um, we want to be looking for buying pressure around here or a reversal pattern to give us a confirmation to join the trend continuation to the upside. And if that happens, we want to be joining right around the $87.50 level or somewhere right above the $87.40 area, right above the key level here. That is the support level here, rather. And then if price continues to break above the $88 level, a retest of structure with buying pressure right around the $88 level will give us another opportunity to add more position to this existing trade. So this is how we are going to be looking out for bullish potential during the New York session today. However, it may happen. We always try to make sure that we paint all the possible scenarios so that when it happens, we don't get caught up in a dilemma of not knowing what really to do. So if the possibility of a breakdown of this bullish trend line happens, uh, well, then let's see this as a bearish momentum, sorry, a bearish signal. And if you are a technique, if you are a counter trend trader, or a scalper, well, you could be looking forward to a retest of structure, it could be a retest of the support level, or the retest of this bullish trend line, or the retest of this bearish trend line, looking for selling pressure around there, then you could actually join um, that 
trend continuation to the downside with a take profit target somewhere around the $86 level, which lines up exactly with that buy zone area. So if you're a counter trend trader, you could be looking forward to that. That is only going to be happening when we cite a breakdown of that bullish trend line. But if you are not and price breaks down that bullish trend line, if you are not a scalper, you are not a counter trend trader, you are not comfortable taking such trades, well, I will be advising you to remain patient and wait for price action to come within this area here where we'll be looking forward for patterns that will be supporting that trend continuation from this area. So this is how we want to be looking at the US oil for the New York session today. So we have, I was able to paint out, paint, um, I like three scenarios for bullish momentum here and um, a possible setup for counter trend opportunity if you are a counter trend trader. So if you have any question regarding what I've just explained so far or you need further clarification whatsoever it is, feel free to drop in your inquiry in the comment section and be rest assured I am willing to be of help to make things more clearer for you. So let's see, I'll be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to read through the chat and see if there are any questions. And if there are none, we'll move on to the next pair. So I can see 127 putting PZ onto you on the chat. It's okay. All right. And we have Problem Destroyer. What a name. I like that. What to do about Bitcoin. Okay. Let's see if we could add that to our schedule. So stay tuned in at the end of... Um, Towards the end of the session, let's see if we can run through the Bitcoin before we call it a day, okay? So, um, in the absence of no question, I guess we move on to the next pair here. So, the next pair we are going to be looking at is the US tech, where we, um, we were actually in a profitable position as at yesterday, during the live session and I told you to uh, move your stop loss to protect your position against any sudden pullback at least that was the first thing I was able to tell you at that juncture in the market uh, remember we were at this point yesterday we were somewhere around here yesterday and I said that um, we took advantage of the move at the beginning of the week around this area at the breakout retest of the $11,250 level and we saw the breakout of the structure yesterday oh okay we were around here yesterday i guess we were around here yesterday and we saw the breakout of the structure and from a technical standpoint whenever we have a breakout of structure definitely we want to be looking forward to a retest of that structure to give us another opportunity to add more position to that trade and this is exactly what happened yesterday i told you that somewhere right above the eleven thousand five hundred dollar area seems more promising to join the rally and we saw an engulfing candle actually as we saw price move about a um, 150 pips move in our direction so if you are taking advantage of that kudos to you for taking advantage of that and um i'm very sure that as soon as price moved in our direction you will definitely have moved your stop loss to either break even or lock in some profit as we can see what happened during the later part of the new york session as price came right back down breaking down the $11,500 MAC, retest of that structure and we can see that um, bearish momentum continue to hold on to this market. So now with the current structure we have here, uh, personally I'm already out of this trade because I was stopped out around the $11,750 level, which is around this level. So at this point we are, if you are not, if you must have been out of this trade anyways, but if you are not, please move your stop loss. You can move your stop loss to break even or somewhere right above the $11,250 level to lock your position, protect your position against any sudden pullback. So right now, we are in a situation where we want to be looking out for trading opportunities for the New York session today. Now, look at what happened here in the last 24 hours. We can see that um, as soon as price got into the $11,700 area, we saw selling pressure from this area. So it's not even once, it's twice. We saw the first one a couple of days ago and we saw another one during the course of yesterday's trading session. Um, we can see that price was unable to break the previous high here, giving us a clue that there is selling pressure around the $11,700 mark. So at this point, let me project this into the future as this is more or less another key level 
we want to be looking at um, as we go into the New York session today. So if we look into the past, we can see how this level also has been a seller niche for participants in this market. So we can see if we go to as far as the month of September, we can see how that level has been a selling niche for participants in this market. So now going into the New York session today, what is going to be our plan? Well, we cannot ignore the fact that we are still right above that bullish that demand zone we identified on the daily time frame. Remember, we identified this demand zone around the eleven thousand dollar mark. Let's scale up to the daily time frame so that we can see what I'm talking about here. So this is the daily time frame here. Despite the fact that we are on a very strong bearish momentum, we can see that the eleven thousand mark has been holding selling pressure as we saw. Every attempt by the sellers to push price right below the $11,000 mark has been met with strong resistance from the buyers. And the same thing happened during the course of the month of September right into the early days of this month as we saw buying pressure from that same 11000 area which led into the breakout of that structure during the later part of last week's trading session around here. So for me on this one, um, we still need to be looking forward to buying opportunity here as if we are thinking of selling the US tech, I will be of, I'm of the opinion that we want to wait for significant structures that will be um, signifying that a selling momentum will happen. And the only way I want to see a sell to sell the US tech is to see a bearish signal that takes out all the buy position around the $11,000 mark around here. And that is going to be coming in form of a breakdown of that structure. And then we wait for a confirmation in the form of a retest of that structure before we want to be joining the trend continuation to the downside. And if we look at the structure here, I have a bearish trend line I was able to identify here. As you can see, we have the structure around here. And we can see since um, September, the structure has been respected. And right now, price is right. Let me zoom this out a little bit. Let me make it a little bit bigger so that we can see this for the sake of those who are using small screens so we have a bearish trend line here which has been guiding price action since um, the month of september so i want to see price break down the demand zone retest the structure it will retest that trend line then i want to be looking forward to joining the bearish momentum but if that does not happen and price continue to remain right above the eleven thousand dollar mark then i still continue to look for buying opportunity so let's scale down to a much lower time frame and let's see what is really happening around this area after we started citing selling pressure in the last 24 hours so scaling down to a much lower time frame let's say the two hours time frame for instance um the first thing remember the first thing we observed on the u.s tech as at the beginning of the week was this um bearish this bullish trend line so after connecting the series of higher lows here, we can see that there is tendencies of buyers in this market. As we uh, connected that low, we had this bullish trend line. So um, following this selling pressure here, this might likely be a retracement phase of that impulsive move here. And there is a likelihood that price might come back into that bullish trend line where we look out for patterns on lower time frame that will be supporting a trend continuation to the upside. So let's see how far this retracement move is going to go. That is this bearish momentum that we've been witnessing in the last 24 hours. Let's see how far it's going to go. Is it going to come back and respect this $11,250 level, which is the, this is the level where price started this week, or is it going to go as far as retesting that bullish trend line one more time before we start seeing reversal patterns that support a trend continuation to the upside. So on this one, we want to be patient here on the US tech. Let's see how this price moves. And if we have a breakdown of that structure, then we want to be negating or buying pressure um, as price continue to move to the downside here. So let's see what happens during the New York session today. So what I'm advising us to do here is remain patient. Uh, we're going to be let me delete this. Okay, the 11,500 is still relevant anyway. Let me keep it. So, right now we have the 11,250 as a yardstick for us. So, we want to see price come back into that level, which also lines up with that bullish trend line. As you can see here, it lines up with the bullish trend line. So, we want to see buying pressure around that area on our lower time frame to join the trend continuation to the upside from that point.
And if price does not come down there, then we'll wait for price to break above the $11,700 level to give us a bullish signal, after which a return to structure will give us a confirmation of joining the trend continuation to the upside. So on the US tech, we want to be very patient here and let's see what happens in the next 24 hours. So that's that on the US tech. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop in your inquiries in the comment section and let's see how I can be of help in that regard. So moving on to the next pair. So the next pair we are going to be looking at is the XAU USD. And um, I know that Innocent Babe is in the house. I know she's a fan of the gold, the yellow metal. And um, on the XAU USD, we have been quite profitable since the beginning of the week and um, thanks to our patience because if not for the patience we might have missed that move as we saw uh, though we saw this um, bearish pressure coming in at the beginning of the week so i was we, we agreed here that um, we want to wait for price action to come back into our buy zone which also lines up with the neckline of the reversal pattern that we were able to identify within the demand zone here um, during the early days of this week. So price came exactly within that um, neckline area here around the 1640 area and we saw buying pressure on lower time frame and we took advantage of that move to the upside. So at this point in time we are running with about how many pips in profit at this point? We are running with about um, over 1800 pips in profit right now and as at yesterday where were we as at yesterday so we we were around here yesterday and i told you to join a retest of this $1,660.50 level and the reason why we joined that momentum was because of this um breakout of the $1,660.50 level and we saw the retest of that structure here yesterday and we actually joined that rally to the upside so right now price has come back into that entry zone at this point so i'm not sure how this is going to go are we going to be having a situation where price takes us out of this trade that we had here if price takes us out of this trade it's okay and uh, well we have already moved our stop loss anyway on this one um i think somewhere below the 1650 dollar level is where our stop loss is here and if price takes us out it's okay we wait for price, we wait for structure to give us another second chance to join the rally to the upside. Now, in addition to um, the $1,660.50 level is this bullish trend line. Look at what happened here since last week. We saw how uh, we were able to find higher lows. And as a result of that, we were able to identify those bullish trend line. And with that bullish trend line, we can see that price is right back around that level. So um, we have two scenarios we want to be looking out for at this point. Are we going to be having a situation where we start seeing buying pressure from this area to incite a trend continuation to the upside? Or are we going to be having a situation where price breaks down that trend line to incite um, a counter trend, probably back into the buy zone here before we start seeing another wave of bullish momentum so we don't know how this is going to go out in the next couple of hours so we need to be very mindful we need to watch out for how price action is going to relate with the structure at around the 1660 dollar level which also lines up with that bullish trend line that has been guiding price action since the beginning of the of um, last week trading session so before we go into the details of how we want to plan this trade for today um, let's scale up to the daily time frame. Let's see what's happening from an holistic perspective. And let's see if the structure on the higher time frame still supports a bullish momentum or we could be having a situation where price might be going to the downside. So scaling up into the daily time frame. Well, um, like I showed you yesterday, we are on a bearish momentum since the beginning of the year. And as a result of that, we were able to connect the series of higher lows here to give us that result and bearish trend line so this is what we have here on the daily time frame so it's obvious that price action has been on a bearish momentum and um to further confirm that the bearish momentum here is strong 
is the key level at the $1,680 mark. Now, look at what happened here in the month of July. Though we had buying pressure here, uh, we had buying pressure during the early days of the month of September. And what we saw during the course of September was that price had been price traded right below the $1,680 level to emphasize the strength of the sellers. Though we had a breakout, we had a breakout here during the early days of the month we can see immediately price came back into the bearish trend line we saw rejection of the trend line one more time and we saw price broke down the key level at the $1,680 level and since then price has been trading right below that structure so this more or less confirms that the sellers are very strong in the market but the reason why we took advantage of the buy momentum is simply because of how the $1,625 level has been rejecting all sell pressure in this market so we can see how uh, as soon as price comes within this level we saw buying pressure the same thing happened during the course of um last week trading session we saw selling pressure from that area and that is the that that is what incited that bullish move we took advantage of at the beginning of this week so what we notice right now is this look at what happened in the last 24 hours Remember, this is the bearish trend line we identified on the daily time frame, remember? And we can see multiple rejection of that trend line at this point. So what does this tell us? It tells us that there is, a, there is tendencies of selling pressure around this level. As we can see, sellers continue to reject all buying attempts to push price right above that structure. So what we want to be looking forward to during the New York session is to understand what is really going on in the market around here? How are we going to be having a breakout of the structure to signal a trend continuation to the upside? Or are we going to be having a situation where reversal pattern around this area is going to likely send price crashing to the downside one more time? So in order to have a better perspective into what is really going on here, it's appropriate that we scale down to, the, to a much lower time frame. But don't let us forget that price has been rejecting that bearish trend line we identified on the daily time frame. So if we scale down to, let's say, the two hours time frame, let's go back to the two hours time frame, and we see um, the multiple rejection of this bearish trend line, what does this tell us? It tells us that their sellers are very strong at this point. And at the beginning of the week, we saw sharp rejection of the $1,670 level. And again, during the course of um, yesterday's trading session, we saw another rejection of the $1,670 level by the sellers. So for me at this one, we cannot ignore the possibility of a bearish momentum coming in from this point. So now the $1,660.50 level is now becoming a significant level, level to watch out for during the New York session today. So we can see our price action is lining up right with the key level here at the $1,660 level and also the bullish trend line we identified um, that has been holding price action since last week. So right now, if we are going to be looking forward to setting opportunities here, what we want to see is a breakdown of that bullish trend line. Breakdown of both the bullish trend line and the key level at the $1,660 level Remember, we are not getting too excited at the sight of such a signal. We want to be patient enough to wait for price action to give us further confirmation in the form of a retest of either the bullish trend line or the key level at the $1,660.50 level, after which we look out for selling pressure on lower time frame to join the decline to the downside. So that is the first scenario we are looking forward to at this point. So we want to see a breakdown of that structure, retest of the $1,660.50 level, look out for selling pressure here on lower time frame, and then we could be thinking of selling the XAUUSD with a take profit target sitting right within the demand zone we identified on the daily time frame, which falls around the $1,630 level and the $1,620 area. And if price continue to go to the downside like that and price test the $1,640 level, please, it's time to move your stop loss to lock in some profit or move your stop loss to break even at that point so that we see how price is going to relate to the structure here, which is the demand, which is the buy zone we took advantage of yes, um, a couple of days ago. So if price continues to form buying pressure around here, then 
we want to see this as another opportunity to join a rally to the upside. But if a breakdown of that level happens and then a retest of structure happens here, then selling pressure on that displays will welcome addition to the, our existing trade on the XAU USD. So it is quite a simple setup we have here on the XAU USD. So I hope we will be on standby to take advantage of whatever opportunity comes if a breakdown of this bullish trend line happens during the New York session today. However, if the breakdown does not happen and price continue to rally to the upside, well, one thing I will say here is that we remain patient. Remember, we are, we are still in this trade and our stop loss is right below the, right around the $1,650 level. So if we see a situation where price breaks out of that bearish trend line, we identify it on the daily time frame. Remember, we identify this bearish trend line on the daily time frame, which has been rejected by sellers in the last 24 hours. So if a breakout of that level happens, I want to be seeing it as a bullish signal. And then if a retest of that um, level happen, and you can see it lines up with the bullish trend line here, then we want to be looking for buying pressure around here to add more position to our buy position on the XAU USD. So this is how we want to trade the XAU USD going into the New York session today. If you have questions, feel free to drop in your inquiries in the comment section and let's see how I can be of help in that regard. So that is that on the XAU USD. So we move on to the next pair and the next pair we are going to be looking at is the XAG USD, which is the silver. And I'm of the opinion that we have a similar setup with what we have on the gold metal. As you can see here, we, uh, we were able to take advantage of a bullish momentum right above the $18.90 level. We took advantage of this move right around this area. And since then, price action has continued to find higher highs and higher lows. But as soon as price got into the $19.70 level, we saw selling pressure from that area during the New York session yesterday, sorry, during um, um, the live session yesterday. And we look at what happened at the beginning of the week as well. We saw selling pressure from this area, emphasizing the strength of the sellers at this point. And since then, sellers have continued to um, hold on to this market. And it has been a, such a great tussle between the sellers and the buyers at this point thereby making the $19 level a very significant structure at this point. So with a breakdown of the $19.50 level, um, well, I will be advising us to move our stop loss to somewhere right around the $19.20 level to lock in some profit. At least we don't want to lose out on the uh, um, the profit we've been, we have took advantage of at the beginning of the week. And let's see, and we already have a second entry running here, which is already in the loss at this point in time. Let's see if we are going to be taken out of this position. And if we are taken out of this position, as we already saw a breakdown of the $19.50 level here, uh, if a retest of that structure happens with, with selling pressure right below the $19.50 level, then we want to be looking for selling opportunities around this area with the take profit target sitting right within the buy zone here or probably extend it as far as the demand zone that we have here, then we continue to lock in some profits as price action moves in our favor. So if we take advantage of a sell momentum at the breakdown retest of the $19.50 level and price touches the $18.90 level here, then we want to be moving our stop loss to lock in some profits or move your stop loss to break even so that we want to see what is going to be happening around this area? We want to see how price is going to relate with the $18.90 level. So are we going to be having a situation where buyers will continue to push pressure here to incite a trend continuation to the upside? Or are we going to be having a breakdown of the structure where a retest will give us selling pressure to add more position to our sell position on this one. So this is this requires patience just like we did on the, at the beginning of the week. So we need to be very patient here and see how price action is going to relate to this current structure that we have in the market right now. And don't forget that, um, don't forget we have a, a high priority event coming up in um, three hours from now. Um, the durable goods order, the gross domestic product analyzed, the non-defense capital goods. So we want to see if it's going to be a positive news for the dollar. And let's see if this, this event 
would likely send some wave in this market at this point. So what we are seeing right now is more or less an anticipation of a catalyst that will decide where price action will be heading in the nearest future. So let's be patient on this one and let's see what happens afterwards. So and whatever happens here, let's get ourselves prepared to take advantage of any potential opportunity. Then another scenario for bullish opportunity here is the $19.70, which I just cited here and I need there to show you. So we have the $19.70 level here, which has been a selling zone for participants in this market. Since the beginning of this week, at least is the highest point price has ever gotten to at the beginning of the week. And if um, during the New York session, um, it happens that um, we see a breakout of the $19.70, then we want to be seeing this as a bullish signal as this was a success move, move by the buyers to take out all the sell position around this area. And if this happens, remember, we want to be patient enough to wait for price action to give us further confirmation, which is likely going to come in the form of a retest of the structure after which we look at the buying pressures on lower time frame to join the rally to the upside. So we have two scenarios for buying and selling opportunity here. Uh, let's be on standby to take advantage of whatever opportunity the market presents us during the New York session today. Now, moving on, the next pair we are going to be looking at is the USD card. And on the USD card right now, I'm already out of my position on the USD card. As we can see, um, after price broke down the structure at around the 1.36 um, during um, Wednesday trading session, during the early hours of Wednesday, uh, we were able to move our stop loss to somewhere right um, around this level. And the reason why we moved our stop loss simply because of this kind of scenario where we might be having a retest of the structure. So right now, I'm already out of this position here. And if you are still in this trade well, I will be advising you to well, move your stop loss to somewhere above the 1.365 area. Let's see how price is going to relate to this current structure here. And if we look closely, we saw this impulsive move to the downside. Price breaking out of that bullish trend line we identified on the higher time frame. Um, I think I should show you that so that we can have uh, a better understanding into what I'm talking about here. So we have this bullish trend line identified on the daily time frame. And what we saw in the last 24 hours, uh, sorry, the last 72 hours was a breakdown of that um, bullish trend line to incite um, the strength of the sellers, to incite this bearish momentum, hereby emphasizing the strength of the sellers at this point in the market. And from a technical standpoint, obviously, whenever we cite a breakdown of a structure like this, we expect that price is likely going to come back and do a retest of that structure. So what I'm seeing what this bullish move is telling me is more or less like a retracement phase of that impulse leg. So we are going to see how far this retracement phase is going to go. Is it going to go as far as retesting that bullish trend line to incite a trend continuation to the downside? Or we could go as far as retesting the 1.3700 level to incite selling pressures on lower time frame to join the trend continuation to the downside. So on the USD card as well, we want to be patient here and wait for um, this move to to mature we want to see how far this retracement phase is going to go before we want to be thinking of selling um the usd card one more time and uh, we have a couple of structures here also that we could take advantage of in the nearest future for selling opportunity here and like i said if we at any point in time notice that price breaks down the 1.35100 level it's another opportunity to add more position to our existing trade on the USD card. So to make our job easier during the New York session today, let's identify a specific zone we want to be looking for selling opportunities here. So in order to do that, what we do here is to bring out our Fibonacci retracement tool, take into consideration this impulsive move we have here, and then we identify our golden zone area, which is going to be falling within the 50 and the 78.6% of this previous impulse leg. So if we draw out our, our retracement tool here, we should be having somewhere within the 50 and the 78.6. Hold on a second. Let me find that out in a moment. So we have something like this. So we have an area between the 1.36400 level and the 1.3700 area 
for selling opportunities here. And if we look closely into this, it's quite interesting that this level also lines up with that bullish trend line number one. That is number one. It also lines up with the 1.3700 level and area which was broken during the early days of this week. And also, if we look for that, it also lines up with that bearish trend line that we identified at the beginning of the week. So we have this bearish trend line here. Uh, we have this bearish trend line here. And I think this bearish trend line might still hold price action. So we have a sell window that um, takes into consideration all the structures that we were able to identify here. So let's see how price action is going to play out in the next um, couple of hours on this one. So let's see how far this retracement phase is going to go. Uh, is it going to go as far as this, as far as this, or as far as this? But most importantly, what we want to be looking out for is a reversal pattern here. It could be a double top structure, a head and shoulder pattern, whatever it is, breakdown, retest of structure on lower time frame, then we could actually join the decline. And if a breakdown of the 1.35100 level happens, a retest of structure, show welcome additional position to our existing trade on the usd card so that is that on the usd card i hope i was able to make things a little bit clearer play out all the possible scenarios that is likely going to be taking showing up during the new york session today so that is what we want to be looking forward to for setting opportunities on the usd card well a breakout of the bearish trend line would happen um, a breakout of the bearish trend line of this bearish trend line could happen, which I'm not sure it would, but if it does, well, we don't want to get too excited to join a bullish momentum there. If a breakout happens, you know that we want to wait for confirmations and that will come in the form of a retest of structure, but I don't think that will happen um, in the next 24 hours. But if it does, we can also get ourselves prepared for whatever uh, um, scenario it brings to us. So that is that on the USD card. If you have any questions, feel free to drop in your inquiries in the comment section. And I will from time to time check in to see if there are any inquiries in that regard. So the next pair we are going to be looking at today is, um, let me see, let me see. Uh, we are going to be looking at um, the GBP USD, I think that's going to be the last pair we are going to be deliberating on today. Oh, we have um, someone who made mention of um, the BTC USD. So let's see if we can quickly run through the GBP USD before we move on to um, the BTC USD, the Bitcoin. So the GBP USD, we also had a situation as at the beginning of the week. Remember, we were taken out of our sell position at the beginning of the week here. So we were caught up in a loss. And we finally witnessed the breakout of the most, the much anticipated 1.1400 level. Remember, we've been waiting for this 1.1400 level to break out before we can take advantage of a bullish momentum. Remember how important this key level has been in the last um, one month now, I guess. It has been a strong selling niche for participants in this market. Look at what happened since the month of September, we saw the breakdown of that structure. Price came back to do a retest of that structure. We saw selling pressure from that area a couple of weeks ago. And during the course of last week trading session as well, we saw multiple rejection from this level by the sellers as well to emphasize the strength of the sellers. So and at, at that point in time, we, sorry, when we cited, um, sorry, when we cited uh, a reversal pattern here at the early days of this week, we were thinking that this could probably incite another bearish wave as we know how strong this 1.1400 level has been for the sellers. However, during the course of, um, I think, is it not Tuesday's trading session, I guess, we saw price take us out of our sell position. Uh, let me delete this at, as this is no longer relevant at this point. So it's no longer relevant. Okay, hold on a second. Let me delete this so we have a clean chart. So we finally saw the break break out of the 1.1400 level to signal that bullish momentum. And we didn't get too excited as we waited for further confirmations to happen, which came in the form of a bullish rectangular pattern. And let me show you how that evolved on the one hour time frame. Hold on a second. Let me zoom in to the current structure here. So we saw price come back to do and uh, give us a confirmation in the form of a bullish rectangular pattern. 
as we saw price consolidate between the 1.500 level and the 1.4350 level area before we join that bullish momentum to the upside. So we took advantage of this move right above the 1.4850 level during the trading session, during the early hours of yesterday's trading session. We took advantage of this move and um, price went to as far as the 1.16500 level. And as soon as price got into the 1.6500 level, we started seeing selling pressure around that area. And as a result of that, um, we moved our stop loss to somewhere around here. I'm taken out of this position and um, we can see how the 1.1600 level was broken. In fact, we saw an opportunity to do a counter trend trade, which I didn't take anyways. But if you are taking advantage of that, kudos to you. So we saw a breakdown rates of that level. And if you are taking advantage of that, price, you will be in profit over about, let's see, about 50, 40 pips thereabout, which is not bad anyways. And price has continued to trade to the downside. And remember, during the course of last week of yesterday's trading session, we identified a buy zone around this area after taking into consideration this impulsive move. And we break, brought out our Fibonacci retracement to run it through the previous impulse leg. And we were able to identify somewhere within the 50 and the 78.6% of that previous impulse leg, which lines up exactly with the breakout of the structure that we observed during the course of Wednesday's trading session. So price is right back at, is coming back into that level. We hope so that if price comes within this level, we want to be looking forward to buying opportunities around this area. It could be a double bottom structure. Whatever reversal pattern is on lower time frame, breakdown, retest of structure, then we want to be joining the potential trend continuation to the upside on this one. And look at, look at the structure here. The, the structure that was broken on Wednesday lines up exactly with where our expectation for buy momentum falls at. So let's see what is going to be happening in the next couple of hours on this one. I hope that price comes within our buy zone and if it does, please let's get ready to take advantage of a trend continuation at the appearance of a reversal pattern around here or probably a buying pressure right above the 1.14850 level Then we want to be joining that trend continuation to the upside and if price continues to the upside like this and a breakout of the 1.1600 level happens and uh, well we want to be seeing this as another opportunity to add more position to our existing trade and if we are going to be adding more position to our existing trade remember we are not going to be getting too excited at the breakout of the 1.16 area as we want to wait for further confirmations to happen which is likely going to come in the form of a retest of the structure look out for buying pressure around this area then we could actually add more position to our existing trade our take profit target still remains around the 1.18 area which is a more or less a very strong key level we identified on a daily time frame let me show you for those who missed out on that um on that in our uh, early session here so we had this 1.18 level identified at the beginning of the week we can see how this level has been a major determinant of price action since the month of july we saw buying pressure from this level and then we saw the break, breakdown of the structure around this area. So we want to see how price action will relate to the structure. Is it going to send price going to the upside? That is what we don't know. Or are we going to be having a selling pressures around this area that will push price to the downside one more time? That we don't know. So that is why we'll be having our take profit target remaining right around that area. And let's see what happens in that regard. So that is that on the GBP USD. Let's get ourselves prepared to take advantage of whatever opportunity lines up for us on the GBP USD in the New York session today. So that is that on the GBP USD. Should we call it a day at this point? Ah, well. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, let me see what I can do here for the BTC USD. So let's quickly run through the BTC USD and see what is happening here. So on the BTC USD, we have um, a bullish momentum um, during the course of uh, the last 24 hours here. So we have a structure here on the BTC USD. Look at what has been happening since the beginning of the year. Price action has been on a downtrend. And as a result of that, we were able to connect the series of um, higher lows here 
to give us that result and bearish trend line. And this trend line has been guiding price action in the last one year. Hold on a second. Let me extend this bearish trend line out a little bit. So we have... Um, uh, 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 I want to extend this out a little bit. So let me... So we have this bearish trend line extended out. Now, after identifying that bearish trend line, the next thing, the next structure, the next emphatic structure that we have here is the demand zone at around the $18 level. And look at what has been happening here since the month of June. We can see how as soon as price comes within this level, we have been seeing buying pressure from this area, emphasizing how important that level is our participant in this market think the bitcoin is cheap enough to buy at that point in time and as a result of that we we were able to identify a key level at the 18 dollar 15 18 thousand dollar 500 18 thousand five hundred dollar level as you can see and what happened here since the month of september was quite interesting as we can see price was caught though we had the breakout of the twenty thousand five hundred dollar level Price has been caught within a channel since the month of September to emphasize the indecision in this market. However, in the last 24 hours here, we can see that we had a final breakout of the $20,500 level. So with a breakout of the $20,500 level, what this simply tells us is that we might be having a bullish momentum going forward. So what this simply means is that buying right above the $20,500 level seems most appropriate at this point as it appears we have a retest of the structure so the next thing we want to be doing here is to scale down to a much lower time frame to see what is really happening here see how price action is relating to the twenty thousand five hundred dollar level in order to make a decision so in order to do that we'll scale down to a lower time frame like the one hour time frame let's see what is happening on the one hour time frame and the first thing you will observe here on the one hour time frame is this impulsive move to the upside so we have an impulse leg here and if we take the impulse leg into consideration and we saw we saw as soon as price got into the $21,000 mark we started seeing selling pressure from that area and I am of the opinion that the selling pressure will likely lead into a retracement back into our golden zone area in anticipation of a trend continuation to the upside so for us to know that this is going to turn out to be a retracement move we need to see a breakdown retest of the $20,500 level to incite that retracement phase. And how far the retracement phase is going to go is something we want to be looking at. And if we take this impulsive move into consideration, running our Fibonacci retracement to via the length of the impulse leg, and we should be aiming at somewhere between the 50 and the 78.6% of that impulse leg, then we'll definitely be having somewhere around here between the $19,500 level and the $20,000 $20, mark as an area to look out for buying opportunity. So let's label this area for the sake of clarity. So we have the buy zone around this level. And then let's give this a yellow color to make things more clearer. So we have, um, we have this. So we should be looking forward to somewhere around here. Then I won't ignore this also after the rejection of the eighteen thousand five hundred dollar level we had this impulsive move as well from this area so i want to be running my fibonacci retracement too along this length as well so we are going to be having a wide range of um buy zone and what is most important is that um, we will be looking for reversal pattern within this level to join the potential rally to the upside However, if you are a counter trend trader, you could actually be, take advantage of this wide buy zone area. That is, if we cite a breakdown of the 20,500, then we want to see this, we want to see the reversal pattern here uh, mature enough to incite a retracement phase. And if that happens, a retest of structure, you could actually join the decline from that level into the buy zone here. So anywhere within the 19,750 and the 19,000 area looks more promising to have our take profit target if that retracement phase happens. So if that retracement phase happens, we look for take profit within this area. But most importantly, we are looking forward to buying opportunity around here in the form of a reversal pattern to take advantage of that trend continuation 
that started um, on last week, Friday. So let's see how this plays out on this one. So that is what I'm looking forward to on the Bitcoin. However, if price does not come back down below the 20,500, how are we going to ignore? Well, if we look at what is happening on the 50 minutes time frame, look at that reversal pattern we identified on the 50 minutes time frame. I think we could have a structure here we could play with. So if we bring out our line chart here and connect the series of lower highs, what do we have? We have something like this. And if price does not drop below the 20,500 level and we see a situation where a breakout of this bearish trend line happens, we don't get too excited. We wait for confirmations in the form of a retest of this bearish trend line. Then we look out for patterns on lower time frame that will support a trend continuation to the upside here. So that is how we want to trade the um, Bitcoin. If So we look out for buying pressure right from this level to join the rally to the upside here. So this is going to be valid. The breakout of the bearish trend line will be valid if price does not break down the $20,500 level to incite the retracement of that impulse leg we identified earlier. So that is that on the GTC USD. If you have any questions, feel free to drop in your inquiries in the comment section of this video. So that is that on the BTC USD. Let's do a recap of what we have talked about so far before we call it a day. So the first pair we looked at today is the US oil. And on the US oil, we continue to look for buying pressure on the US oil. And I have said that if price does not break down the $87.40 level, that is, we don't see a situation where uh, price breaks down that bearish trend line like this into this structure to look for buying opportunity, then a break above of the structure retest a breakout of the structure rate test will give us confirmation to join the trend continuation to the upside. So on this one, we are we are still in profit on the on the US oil, and I've advised us to move our stop loss to somewhere right below the $87 mark to protect our position against any sudden pullback that might happen at this point. Now remember, we identified this trend line on the 50 minutes time frame, which appears to have broken at this point. And if at any point during the New York session today, we have a retest of structure, then we want to be looking out for buying pressure to join the rally to the upside. And if that does not happen and price continues to break, continues to the upside in such a way that it breaks above the $88 mark, $88 mark then a retest of the structure will give us a confirmation to add more position to our existing trade. So that is that on the US, US oil. Then we went on to talk about the US tech where I said we should be patient enough to see how far this bearish momentum is going to go. Are we going to be having a situation where price comes back into this bullish trend line to take advantage of a trend continuation? So let's hold on and see if price is going to give us that leverage. Then we went on to talk about the XAUUSD where we still we are still looking forward for buying opportunity on the XAUUSD as long as price continue to respect this bullish trend line, which also lines up with the $1,660 level. So if that happens, we continue to remain comfortable in our buy position that is still running at this point. Uh, however, if price breaks down the $1,660 level, retest to structure with selling pressure right below the $1,660 level, we want to be joining a sell momentum to the downside. Then we went on to talk about the XTG USD where we have a similar scenario with what we have on the gold. And one thing I said here is that since we already have the breakdown of the $19.50 level, if a retest of the structure happens with selling pressure right below the $19.50 level, then we want to be looking for selling pressure into selling opportunity right into the demand zone we identified on the daily time frame right around the $18.20 or the $18 area at this point. And if that happens, as soon as price comes into the $18 area, I told you to move your stop loss to break even or lock in some profit as we want to see how price is going to relate to this current structure. Are we going to be having buying pressure here to push price to the upside or are we going to be having a breakdown of that structure retest to structure to add more position to our existing trade. However, if price continues to go right above that neckline, sorry, above that $19.50, we want to remain in our buy position where a breakout of the $19.70 level retest to structure 
will give us a confirmation to add more position to our existing trade. Then we went on to talk about the USD card where um, we took advantage of a bearish momentum at the beginning of the week. And at this point in time, I'm already, I told you I'm already out of this trade as price appears to do it, be doing a retracement of this impulsive move that we have here. So I said we should remain patient here and see how far this retracement phase is going to go. Uh, we're going to be having a situation where price will come within the sell window here, which lies exactly with the bearish, the bullish trend line that was broken um, yesterday. So we had this bullish trend line broken yesterday. So we expect that if price is going to come back and do a retest of that structure, if that happens, we want to be looking out for patterns to join the trend continuation to the downside on this one. And I told you how important the 1.35100 levels is, as if we have a breakdown of that structure, then a retest should give us a confirmation to hard position to this trade if you are still in the sell position. And if you are not, there's an opportunity to join the sell continuation to the downside. Now, this second, the next pair we close the day with is the GPP USD. And on the GPP USD, we are looking forward to um, a trend continuation to the upside. Remember, we are first of all stopped out in a lost position at the beginning of the week. But fortunately for us, we were able to take advantage of this bullish trend continuation pattern after we cited this bullish rectangular pattern. And price has continued in our favor. And as we can see, price has continued to climb to the high side. So for those who missed out on this one, I was able to identify this buy zone around this area. Remember, we had a breakout of the 1.14850 level and we are looking forward to price coming back to retest that structure. So if price comes within the structure here and we start seeing reversal patterns or buying pressure from this area, then we could be looking forward to an opportunity to join or add more position to our existing trade on this one and if price does not go that far but we start seeing um reversal pattern it could be your double bottom structure or your inverse head and shoulder pattern then we could actually join a rally to the upside and if that does not happen and price continues to the upside a breakout of the 1.16 area is more or less a signal for buying opportunity but remember we are not getting too excited at the breakout of that structure we want to wait for price action to give us further confirmation in the form of a retest of the structure after which we look out for patterns on lower time frame to join the rally to the upside so that is that on the gbp usd and i think um we are going to be calling it a day at this point i really appreciate every single one of you for being part of the session uh let's see what happens in the next um, 24 hours on the peers we have deliberated on so far and um i look forward to seeing you tomorrow same time 10 a.m UTC 11 a.m. West African time and let's come together again to analyze the financial markets together. So on this note, I want to wish you best of luck today and do have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.